Good morning, everyone. I welcome you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ here on Palm Sunday. It is an exciting day. I'm glad to see each and every one of you here in the sanctuary. And I welcome all of you online who are worshiping, me, worshiping with us online. Some of you may be in the hospital, nursing homes, or at home, or hundreds of miles away. You're joining us, and I praise the Lord for that. And I'm glad you are here. A few quick announcements I want to make. Uh, now, this relates to those in the sanctuary, but some of you who aren't with us today have cars, and you can still do this. Uh, to my left, your right, there's a table with 15 Bibles on it. Those 15 Bibles are going to be presented to the 15 students in our present confirmation class. I ask that you take a few minutes today, some of you may have already done it, after the service, and mark a favorite verse in the Bible. And with a highlighter, just highlight it and write your name beside the verse, or like me, under the verse, because I can't write small. And by the way, you cannot have Joshua 1.8. I already took it. <laughs> but the other, how many thousand verses in the Bible? Go for it. Hope you'll do that. It means a lot to our kids when they see those in their Bibles. Also, this being a spring break week, we will not be having a row this week. And also... Um, we are having a lot of other great things happening because it is also Holy Week. So, Good Friday service will be 6 o'clock here in the sanctuary. We're going to have a mixture of the stripping of the altar service with the tenebrae service where we remember, where we try to experience the truth that Jesus has died through readings, through music, through communion. I hope you'll be with us at that service. Speaking of that, I had some people lined up for reading and then realized they're in the choir and they need to be practicing at the same time. If, you, if, uh, if you'd like to help me, let me know or I'll be just asking some people to do some reading. Let me tell you, I really want to get people whose children have left home. It was one of my sweet memories of my growing up years was going to a Good Friday service every year to a church different than our church with my dad. It was a tradition. It was rich in our lives. So I hope uh, we'll, we'll find those people. Also then, uh, well, let me just put it this way. There's a great insert here showing our Holy Week activities. Take some time to look at it. Pray about it. Take it home with you. Put it somewhere you'll see it so you can pray for this. And if you know somebody that you believe would benefit from our Good Friday service, or maybe they got children the right age to come the journey to Jesus between 4 and 6 on Saturday. Hand this to them and say, hey, this is really good, something good going on at Chickasaw Methodist. I'd love for you to be a part of that. And also, we'll be here next Sunday at 9 and 11 to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. But today is Palm Sunday. And on the original Palm Sunday, as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a colt, the people celebrated, most notably the children, singing their praises to Jesus. In honor of that, our children are going to process in now. They're going to... Wait, Tony's telling me to wait. Music starts. You guys can stand with us as we praise the Lord. Stand up. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you, we turn to you, hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you, we long for you. We see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Jose. Returning 
to you we turn to you in your kingdom broken lives are made new you make us new is when we see you we find strength to face the day presence all our fears are washed away they're washed away come on sing it out Hosanna Hosanna you are the God who saves us worthy of all our praises Hosanna Hosanna come up your way among us we welcome you here Lord Jesus cause when we see you we find strength to face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away to face the day and in your presence all our fears are washed away they're washed away Matthew 21, 8 through 9 tells us a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. I see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes, the whole earth shakes. I see His love and mercy washing over all our sins. The people sing, the people sing. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. I see a generation rising up to take their place with selfless faith, with selfless faith. I see a new revival stirring as we pray and see. Oh 
things unseen show me how to love like you have loved me break my heart for what breaks yours everything i am for your kingdom's cause Please be seated. As we uh, prepare to go to prayer, if you ever find yourself thinking or saying, you know, I end up praying the same thing every day when I pray, and it gets a little monotonous, that song we just sang, if you'll just pray the verses to that song and the chorus, that's a good prayer life right there, y'all, for sure. We need to uh, pray for a number of people from our congregation. Uh, Javier, how's your mom? Is she home? Praise the Lord. Beth Ann Barrett, Javier's mom, is home. Yes, we celebrate that. Uh, I was able to see Carol Evers and Donna McHenry this week. And they have both been transitioned from hospitals to rehab facilities. I was talking to Caleb this morning, and he said they were able to see Donna yesterday, and she's doing better, so we celebrate that. Also, uh, someone who's usually very much a part of our Sunday morning breakfast, breakfast, Sydney Bennett, is in the hospital with kidney stones, and the infections are with that, and we want to pray for her to recover. She and I have been texting each other over the last 24 hours. And then also I just learned this morning, Joyce Green is in the hospital. She has fallen several times in the last week, and now she's in the hospital. They're trying, Kathy is right, trying to find out what's causing these falls. So we want to pray for her as well. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we are reminded of the story on Palm Sunday that you told the people when they criticized you about people, about people singing to you. That if the crowds didn't praise you, the rocks themselves would cry out in worship of you. Lord, we don't want to get outdone by rocks. Lord, we want to praise you. We want to celebrate you. We want to know you. We want to experience the power of your resurrection in our lives and, and, and as a group of people here. We ask that we may experience and understand realize and see how great you are and that our lives will be multiplied they will be blessed they will be just changed by what you do in us lord we do pray for our dear friends that are in the hospital uh Car joyce green and sydney bennett we pray for these two dear ladies that we love deeply that you will heal them i pray the, for Sydney, that she will be able to move through the process of healing and be back on her feet and be back home and then eventually with us soon. We pray for Joyce as well. Running tests, that is such a weary time with a, in a hospital when they just keep running tests and more tests and some more tests. So give Joyce, Andrea, special time, patience in these hours and days ahead. Be with them and Lord help them to pinpoint the exact diagnosis. And Lord, we do pray for Carol. We pray for Donna. 
they were doing the work of rehab and we just pray that each day they'll grow stronger and they'll go further and further and further into the healing process you've given our, our, our bodies through moving them and changing. Lord, we thank you that Beth Ann is home from the hospital as well. And Lord, we lift up our Holy Week activities that it will be a time of both somber seriousness and great joy at the same time. That we will see the seriousness of our sin, but also the power and the glory of your resurrection. That you will overwhelm us with how great you are, and we will give you glory as we seek to love one another. And most importantly, seek to love you and glorify you with our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. How many of y'all are in the fifth grade? Any fifth graders? One fifth grader? Okay. Up oh, to three. Three fifth graders. Fifth graders. Oh, all right. Maybe he wasn't listening. Uh, asleep. Uh, so fifth graders, have you learned this important word in fifth grade? I learned it in fifth grade. Matter. M-A-T-T-E-R. Yeah. Some of you others learned it. Okay. You learn to say, well, they, when I was in school, they didn't teach us about matter till I was in fifth grade. Okay, and I remember this because it was fascinating to me that there's only so much stuff in the world, and it's called matter. And no matter what it is, matter never goes away. Now, that's interesting because the Bible teaches that. And I know some people say science is opposed to the Bible. I think if we take a closer look at the Bible, we see the Bible teaching us a lot of great science. And one is that God made everything and everything that was made, was made, is made, and always will be made. And there'll never be any more made. And so that brings to mind, oops, I forgot my tools. That things change state but there's always something there so uh we you know this is a piece of paper and if i burn it it burns up better look at my hand and not you right so when the paper burns up it's still there it's just ashes right the matter is still there. It's just different, right? And then if you use some of the cool magic paper, it's still there. You just don't see the ashes. It's still there. And the Bible teaches, uh, and I've been going upstairs, I've been looking at Desiree and Luana, uh, Leanna's post on Facebook about what y'all do on Sunday mornings. You've been learning about creation. And creation says that when God made people, he made us out of the dust of the earth. And unfortunately, when we messed up, we die because of our sins in the world. And we return back to dust, just like paper becomes dust. But here's the good news. God didn't stop with dust. And we're going to be learning about this today, that God loves dust, even though that's what we are. And, you know, we have that uh, Ash Wednesday service. You remember that? Some of y'all went to that? You know, we put ashes on our head. And some of us even went around all day with it on there, like some kind of weirdo that put a tattoo on that was falling off our face all day long. But we do, how do, what do, what do we do the ashes in? Do I just pour them on people? The sign of the cross. Because the cross broke the curse of the ashes. So y'all go learn more about creation and know that God loves us and that he doesn't ever tire of helping us out. Mm. Yeah, magic paper is crazy. Oh, and Brian has an announcement, and I forgot. So would you please make it, brother? I'm so sorry. I... Would 
Could you Thank start you. over, please? Yeah. I'm sorry. I let you down all over the place, man. I love you, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> love you, too. Uh, next Saturday is our Journey to Jesus event uh, outreach to the community. Uh, it's from 4 to 6, and uh, we do need some more volunteers. In fact, we need everybody. Um, setup will be at 3 and take down at 6, so if you can help with either one of those, that would be awesome. If you can't do any heavy lifting, then um, we still need greeters for both parking lots. Uh, we're going to have snow cones and popcorn, so we need somebody running those. Uh, also, uh, running a game. Um, we'll find a, a place for you if you can be here. Um, also, well, we need pop-up canopies. If anybody has any pop-up canopies for shade that uh, we could borrow, that would be great. And pray that the weather will be good like today that would be perfect <laughs> um but there's going to be a lot of kids there i'm sure that don't know too much about easter other than it means baskets and candy and uh they search for eggs and try to find them before anyone else does but we want them to learn about jesus's sacrifice and how he loves us so much that he chose to die rather than live without us so come please be part of it with us thank you uh set up at three and it ends at six uh next saturday yes thank you let's pray we're going to commit these gifts to god and worship god giving our tithes and offerings to the lord dear lord we thank you for the privilege of being called your sons and your daughters thank you that we're in your family and you give us such a glorious inheritance and lord at this time we want to worship you giving back a portion of what you've put in our lives. We thank you that we are provided for so well. Help us to learn true gratitude and live in a constant state of gratitude. Help these gifts go to great kingdom work in the world as they're used and in our lives as we give them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
struck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing, praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy. Thank you, Brent and Angie, for that wonderful, wonderful leadership in worship. As we continue in our sermon series of Christ making us fully human, I want to speak a little bit to the problem that holds us back. As I was working on that this week, I came upon one word that sets the situation in perspective. And that one word is dust. So I want to speak about our dusty nature. And more importantly, how God responds to that. Look to, we're going to begin with 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This will be the starting point and in some ways the ending point of this whole message. Beginning with Verse 47, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. There's a number of places in Paul's writings where a com strong comparison is made between Adam and Jesus. The first man who fell. And Jesus, the second sinless man who succeeded and was victorious. And that is why Chris. Christmas, that's what Christmas is, but that's why Easter is such a big deal. Verse 40, um, 47 through 49, Adam, the first man, was made from the dust of the earth, while Christ, the second man, came from heaven. Earthly people are like the earthly man, and heavenly people are like the heavenly man. Makes sense. Just as we are now like the earthly man, we will someday be like the heavenly man. The benefits, the power, the love, and the goodness of heaven comes to us through Christ. Today being Palm Sunday, let's look together at two Palm Sunday scriptures to set our tone for our time together. And I want to again ask that question. How could things change so quickly in just one week? And I'm staying in the Gospel of John, only the same Gospel writer, telling the story of Jesus. John 12, verses 12 through 13. The next day, Jesus, the, the news that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down to the road to meet him. They shouted, praise God, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the king of Israel. Word came that Jesus was coming back to Jerusalem. And when he rode in, there was a spontaneous parade. We live here in Mobile and we have huge huge, big 
Mardi Gras parades that are very carefully planned, hundreds of vendors, hundreds of thousands of barricades, dozens of police officers. Here, it just happened. But then a week later, on Friday, John 19, verse 14, it was now about noon, the day of preparation for the Passover. And Pilate said to the people, look, here is your king. Again, the crowd. Away with him, they yelled. Away with him. Crucify him. What? Crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar. The leading priest shouted back. Then Pilate turned Jesus over to be crucified. Such a shift. We'll get back to that at the end of the message. Such a shift took place. Friends, I got bad news for you. If you don't know this, I'll just need to tell you. We're cursed. We're cursed. Now, have you ever really tried hard at something, you know? Maybe you read one of those work smarter, not harder books. And there's this persistent situation in your life. And you come at it from a new angle with new energy and new enthusiasm. And you pour yourself into it six weeks, 12 weeks. And then it, you realize it's not gotten any better. I don't know what you think, but one of the thoughts I have is, I must be cursed. I must be cursed. Because I'm trying harder and getting less. That is part of life for all of us. But let's look at this a little bit more serious. First thing we have to know about our dusty nature is that we are created from dust. Genesis 2, 7, then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into man's nostril, and the man became a living person. We as people who believe the Bible believe God made everything, and then his greatest creation was people. And he brought us out of dust and turned us into, here we are, homo sapiens, living human beings. And it's interesting the way the story is told here. It's that God made Adam, and he was just like a corpse, but he hadn't died. He just hadn't yet come to life. And God says he breathed life into the man's nostril, and he became a living being. The spark of being alive was brought in to Adam. And with his wife Eve, lived in a perfect world, in a perfect garden. But they got off track. They went wrong. And we became cursed. Genesis 3.17 says, Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is crushed because of you, cursed because of you. All of your life will be a struggle to scratch a living from it. We've got this joke going around. It's funny how jokes and sayings are fads and they come and go. And one of them today is, you had one thing to do and you didn't even do it. Right? Now, I wonder how many of us don't do a show of hands, but I wonder how many of you have heard that, have heard it said to you, have said that, or at least have thought that about a situation. You had one thing to do. Well, with Adam and Eve in the garden, they had one thing not to do, and they did it. I I just always wonder how frustrated God must have been. I gave you everything, but one thing, and you had to take it anyway. And now the human race is cursed. Well, what does that mean, that curse? You can go a thousand directions with that idea. I want to suggest to you today, from the following verses here in the third chapter of Genesis, that there's two things that come to us as a curse. First, 
Let me read the scripture and then we'll talk about it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, and though you will eat of its grains by the sweat of your brow, you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made, from you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. Life will be more difficult because Adam and Eve, you have sinned. By the sweat of your brow, you will get your food to eat. This week, I was uh, thinking about this verse while I was walking a treadmill. Sweat was pouring off me. And it hit me. We live in the modern age where most of us do not grow our own food. But I thought, here I am, sweating on a treadmill because of the food I hate. It just struck me as hilarious that, okay, so today we don't have to sweat to get our food because we have air conditioning, but at the same time, we end up, at least I end up sweating anyway, trying to get the effects of the food off me. Life became more difficult. It's hard to think of a world without invasive insects, without destructive bacteria, without funguses that destroy things, without caterpillars that eat your plants. But there once was this. But everything changed and weeds were, came into play, thorns and thistles. But the second, the greater curse, and it is a curse, is that people would die. Before their sin, Adam and Eve were told, you will die if you do this. Well, they had to find out. So from the dust you were created, from the dust you will return. Did any of you, or are you presently... A person here who dust, the action, dust furniture. Growing up, Saturdays were the day to do housework around our house. And my mother, being a charitable woman, even though she was quite a force to be reckoned with, gave us choices. We could dust or you could do bathrooms. Now, some of you dust where you sort of take this little fluffy thing and you hit things with it, and that's called dusting. My mother's definition of dusting was you removed every single knick-knack, and we did not use spray furniture polish. It was in a bottle, and you shook it on the rag, and you rubbed it in to the wood. Spray was way too extravagant for us. Now, I think I must have broke too many things. Because somewhere along the choice was taken to me and I became the bathroom man always. I mean, I guess you can't break a bathtub, but I think maybe I broke things dusting and mom's like, uh-uh, we can't keep doing this. Dust, don't you hate dust? Dust reminds us that we one day will die. And death is a pretty permanent thing. Now, I'm thankful God's given me eternal life in Jesus Christ beyond the grave, but I tell you, when people die, I just miss them. I've had just a great time this week with Elisa's dad coming to visit. He'll be with us at the 11 o'clock service today. But one thing about his presence with us has caused me to miss Elisa's mother, Elaine, so much more. When people are gone, they are gone, and we miss them. I think of uh, Calvin Bochel here every Sunday, sitting right there. He would completely fall asleep during the sermon. Not even a little bit, I mean totally asleep. But I miss him like everything. I remember his arthritis would be so bad when he would shake his hands, his bones would make a noise. I'm not exaggerating. But he was always here. He was always here. I, I, just, I just appreciate him, and, and he's not, and I miss him. Now, this being Lent, we begin Lent with this service called Ash Wednesday. As I talked to the kids, you know, we put ashes on our heads. And then when some of us, like me, who had it at noon, would go around all day with ashes on our face, like we don't know how to work a wash rag. 
But we do this to remind us that one day we will return to dust. That this life is, has an end. But, you know, that can just, I, I've read about a number of different people's perspectives on Ash Wednesday. And if you stop there, that is depressing. Hey, y'all, we're going to have a worship service and the point will be is that one day we will all die. Who wants to go to that? But how do we make the sign of the ashes? We make it in the sign of a cross because the cross of Jesus Christ changed everything with a curse. And the curse of death has been reversed with the person and the work of Jesus Christ. And this, this verse is kind of what lit the fire under me to talk about dust here. The first man of earth was made, get the word, made of dust. The second man is from heaven. It was the man of dust. So also we who are made of dust, that would be us, as is the heavenly man. So also are those who are heavenly. And we have borne the image of the man of dust, and we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Jesus crossed an amazing boundary when he was born. He was born to us as the Son of God and to us the people of dust. But being the Son of God, he brought all that was good from heaven to us and broke the power of the curse in our life of death and sin. We all have a deep and profound hunger for God. I'm not sure why it is I'm quoting wise Pascal twice in two weeks, but he was the one who said this great point, that there is a, great, there is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of every person, which cannot be filled by any created thing, but only by God, the creator made known through Jesus Christ. Everybody knows there's something missing in their life. And many of us try to fill it through a lot of different things. Pleasures, pursuits, popularities, success, but the only thing that fulfills our heart's deepest longing is the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives through the Holy Spirit. That is the only way that a deep hunger is filled in us because the heavenly man brought heaven to us here on earth and we need to live in him. But dust has a lot of power for us. Dust teaches us several things. And the first thing that dust teaches us that life is temporary. Psalms 39. Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. You have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. At best, each of us is but a breath. In the King James translation, it says, we are but a hand breath. Not the length, but the width of your hand. Now, you remember when this scripture was first written, rulers, as we know them, had not been invented. So you measured things using what you carried with you, your body parts. The width, and, the, and we're sometimes when we say it, you know, I even, I, you know, we sometimes even say that, at least I say it today. You know, uh, get a drill bit about as thick as your pinky. You know, we, we still do that. It's, it's, it's just a good point of comparison, you know. It's about as far apart as your eyes are. You know, we, we say that. Well, he said, our life is only this long. Our lives are temporary. Life is short and death is permanent. Those of you who are raising kids or have raised kids know that. How quickly the years pass by. 
You know, our first two children were 18 months apart. Katie was born two years later. And we were so tired. We were so busy. Sometimes, not only I thought it, I said it out loud. You know, I wish they came with a pause button so we could get a break. Very, when you have small children, some of the busiest times of your life. And, of course, then it later dawned on me, you know, if we had a pause button, they would have been in diapers that much longer. So God was wise to tell us, move forward, move forward. But, you know, my youngest daughter is now a freshman at Auburn University. Where did all the time go? Where does all the time go? Life is temporary. It's very, very short. Dust teaches us that we are nothing without God. In the 8th Psalm, David looked up at the stars and he says, when I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars are set in place. What is mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you should care for them. Okay, okay. the word dust is not in this verse. Have y'all noticed I've been like working verses with the word dust in it? Pretty cool, huh? Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, okay, I don't have dust here. The word D-U-S-T is not here, but it is implied. That David said, I'm standing up looking at the stars, and I think I am nothing but a speck of dust on a rock somehow floating through outer space or inner space or whatever you want to call the space we're in. But I'm just a speck of dust on a rock so close to the sun that I can live. What are mere mortals that you should even think about us? And then he escalates it, and it's a beautiful escalation, that you care about us. You know, watching, reading scenes from the Ukrainian war is sad. But I don't know about you, but for me, there's this point where I can only care so much. Because I don't really know these people. It's sad, and I pray for them, and and I do things that, that, that can help them. But there's only so much. He says, not only do we, God thinks about us, he cares about us, in spite of the fact we are only dust. And then from that we see that without God we are nothing. We are nothing without God. Now, you can get kind of depressed right now. Maybe I've already depressed some of you here with all this serious talk of dust. Without God, it is a pretty despairing life. It is a pretty empty life. It is a pretty sad and difficult life. And I honestly, like I shared last week, genuinely wonder how people live without Jesus. Jesus brings so much good into my life. But usually people don't get, there's a few, but most people don't ever get sucked into the despair of taking a good look at their situation because there's this thing called the pride of self-importance that keeps us from realizing how limited our life and our reality is. See, if you, the pride of self-importance says I'm more important than so-and-so. And as long as I can think I'm more important than so-and-so, I feel all right. But when you began to think of only yourself and God, you realize, I need the Lord, and I am nothing without God. Dust teaches us that we need to repent, and we need to live in a spirit of repentance. In Luke chapter 13, the question is posed to Jesus about some awful things that happened to some people. Some were murdered by a megalomaniac, political leader and others were killed by a tower falling on them and the people were raising the question and you've had this question asked to you were those people worse sinners than us which is kind of implied the reason I'm talking about is I think they are 
you know. Uh, hurricane hits the coast, misses Mobile, but hits Panama City Beach, Port St. Joe, maybe, maybe Houston, Texas. I wonder what's wrong with those people over there. If you don't know, another hurricane's coming, and it's going to hit us. Just to, that's my next charge for my weather advice here. But Jesus makes his point. You don't need to ask that question. What you need to do is know you need to repent. Or you will perish. Whether a tower falls on you, whether Herod kills you, you will perish if you don't repent. We all need to repent. Now, repent is a church word. And I'm going to venture to say most of you have not used in the last seven days of your life a normal conversation. Being Dave Rhodes, who likes to be so different, I do try to use it in my conversations because it's such a powerful word. Repentance means this, simply, you change your mind, you change your thinking, and you're walking in one direction, and you go in another direction. In a sense, what happened on Palm Sunday is an example of reverse repentance. They were praising Jesus on Sunday, and then on, thir- on Friday, they say, kill him. They changed their thinking. They were very easily manipulated, and they at- went in a totally different direction. And I added there, we need to live in a spirit of repentance. When I accepted Christ when I was 13 years old, I repented of all my sins that I knew of and could understand what he, I didn't even really know what they were, but, you know, just God give my, just, Lord, here they are, I, I want to I turn away from everything. But then as I continue to live for the Lord, I want to live in a spirit of repentance. I want to keep my life continually submitted to God. I want to always live in a spirit of repentance. Now, like sometimes I, I, I'll get in a, a dispute with somebody, and because I'm so smart and because I'm always right, I win. Yes. And then I, the Spirit of God speaks to me, and I realize what pain I've caused someone else. And so I go and I apologize. And I even sometimes I even say, I want to repent. You're not God, but I want to repent and change the way I'm approaching this situation. Because I don't think it's really the way the Lord wants me to approach it. We need to live in a spirit of repentance. And finally, the good news for us today is that God loves us. Psalm 103, the Lord is like a father to his children. He is tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are and remembers that we are only dust. There's that word again. There is that word again, dust. God loves us knowing that we are dust. And he wants to pour the richest blessings of heaven into your life and my life. God wants you to have his best in your life. But we have to realize that something went wrong and we inherited it from our great-grandparents And it's led to us living in ways that don't always please the Lord. We need to come to that place to surrender to him, receive his grace, and then continue to live in that spirit of repentance, letting God be the only guiding authority in their lives. It's a peculiar thing. I've been thinking about this all morning since I woke up. I guess thinking about the sermons got it on my mind. How many times people have told me about something in their past in relationship with God 
our relationship with the church or usually the church that I'm serving. And, and I, I'll smile and I listen and I say, you know, we still have church there every Sunday at 9 and 11. You, you know, I don't have to say any more than that. You know, they, they get the joke, but it's more than a joke. We're still here. We're still serving and we still want you. Come join the team. We're still here. It's easy to get off track. God wants us to persevere. He wants us to continue. Again, back to when I was 13 years old, I thought I had discovered all that God had for me in that first month. Oh, glorious. It was an emotional high like few others I've ever had in my life. But I got to tell you, the richest blessings that have come into my life from God, I didn't know I had them. I didn't want you to say this. I didn't know I had received them until I already had them. We must continue on and be faithful. And the curse becomes more and more reversed. And God's grace grows stronger in each of you. Do you know your dust? Have you said yes to Jesus? And are you continuing on? So one day he will say, Come into your reward, my good and faithful servant. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we bring ourselves to you, and at this time we ask that you will help all of us here in this minute of silence here to give ourselves completely to you, to trust you with all of who we are, even though we're only dust, that the riches of heaven will flow into our lives and it will be multiplied time and time again that your grace will be not only given to us but magnified multiplied and shared to others as we seek to live for you lord help us to be faithful to you in the little things daily the reading the praying the living the loving others so that we may see the gifts of heaven given to us and poured out from our lives into the people all around us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand for our benediction? May the gifts of God be yours now and every day this week richly. Go in the name of Christ. Amen. Away. They're washed away.